So in this part 2 video of stylized vine tutorial, we're going to use mash to populate the leaves on the vines and then we're going to set these leaves up in UE4 and see what they look like. Okay, so to do this next step, we're going to use a part of Maya called mash and you can find that in your tab along the top or if you go into effects, you can find it across the top ribbon. But here, I want to just use the mash here and then I'm going to select the leaves that I want to use to populate the world, to populate the vines, and select the create mash network. And then we can get that network up by clicking the next button along. So we have a mash network with the distribute node here. So with mash one distribute selected, we want to go across here and change linear to mesh. And then we want to drop the mesh that we want to duplicate onto into this slot here. So I've got vine one here, and if I just go across and drop that in there with middle mouse button, we can see those leaves start populating this vine. So we can change the method of scattering, so we can put it on vertex or something like that, and we can change the number of points up here. So we just increase this, we'll get more and more leaves on this vine. So the next thing I want to do is change the orientation of these leaves. So if we go to the mash network, we can select orient, and we can hit add orient node. So that's added orient to the mash network and then we can change these so I want them to be facing down. So now I've got them all facing in one direction and I've got them all facing downwards as well. So once we've got those facing the direction we want, which for me is straightforward, we can actually go back to the mash node here because you'll see that actually only one, one of those leaves is displaying. So we can select ID and then add node and that will increase the ID count and include all them other leaves from the set that we selected. Then I want to go back to the mash network here and I want to add a random. And now I can change the random rotation of these leaves. And to change the scale of the leaves, I'm going to untick absolute scale and tick on uniform scale and then I can increase the X for these and some will get big and some will get small. So I think the overall scale of these leaves are a little big so what I can do is come back to my outliner and select the leaves. So they're invisible at the moment but the scale uh, gizmo still appears. You can just scale these down a little bit. And then I'm going to keep on tweaking the random rotation of these until I get something that I'm happy with. Okay, so after messing around with that a little bit, I've added an extra orient and uh, tweaked the random settings and I've ended up with a hundred leaves on this one. Now once you have something that you like, you can duplicate that node. And then in the new node, go to distribute and drag in one of your other vines and that will update on that new vine. And then you can just change the number of points as needed. And then we want to delete the history on all of these as well. Edit, delete all by type, history, and freeze the transformations. So at this point, it's probably a good idea to go over these and carefully fix any obvious errors. So they don't have to be perfect, but we want to make sure that there's not too much ugly crossing over or areas where the leaves are just floating in free space. So 
So once they're cleaned up, we can apply the texture to the wood of the vines. So I'm going to just use a tiling texture for this, and here's the tiling texture I made previously. Now this is just um, some paint strokes, uh, random paint strokes in different directions, and then flattened and colorized, and then I've just done some uh, lines across that as well and I've made this tile and I do that by taking the size of the image which for this is 2000 by 2000 go to filter other and offset and then I'll offset in that in one direction by a thousand and then I'll paint out any parts that are wrong and then offset that again and you can do this for all sorts of stuff and that's also what I've done for the wood the plain wood underneath so to create this I simply Take a background colour, add some paint strokes, add some large strokes of varying brightnesses in different directions. And then I use this as a base for a lot of my work. Then once I've got something that I'm happy with, I can go to filter and offset this. So in other, we have offset here. Now this canvas is a thousand by a thousand, so I want to offset this by minus one thousand by one thousand. And here you can see down the center is where that these strokes don't line up. So I can start painting over this. And there's a few different ways I can do this. I can do it with the clone stamp tool. Or I can just go in and start doing more strokes over the top of that. Maybe a mix of both. And I just want to do that until it's covered up and I want to be careful not to go over the edge. And then once I'm happy with that, I go back to filter, back to offset and offset that again by the same amount so that it goes back to like it was before. So now we've got a tiling texture and to add the streaks, I would do just the same thing until I end up with something like this. So once you've got your vines texture, you can save that to the same folder as your leaves. And back in Maya, we can start to apply that to these vines. Now you could take these vines, unwrap them really neatly and texture them in Substance Painter, but as they're very small and very obscured, then I find a tiling texture will do just fine for these. So if you remember, we created a auto UV unwrap on these vines in ZBrush. So we want to keep them just for the light map channel in UV4. So what we can do is open up the UV set editor for each of these vines, and we want to copy these and rename them zero and one. One will then become the light map channel for UV4, leaving UV set zero to be our texture UV set, where we can re-unwrap them as we please. Okay, so once we've done that, we can start applying the wood texture to these branches. So we select these. We just want to select only the, the branches. Once they're selected, we can right click and assign new material. And I'm going to assign a Lambert to it. I'm going to name this Lambert Vines Wood. And then I'm going to go to the color slot, go to File, and then apply that wood texture. So with only the wood still selected, we can open up the UV editor. And we want to make sure that the UV set editor is on set one. And then we're going to go to create and we're going to create planar and open up the dialog box. And we want to create a planar on the Z axis. Apply that. So that'll flatten out those branches on the Z, which is straightforward on these branches. And then I want to scale that up so that the detail is a little bit bigger and we get some tiles across that. Now if we zoom in and have a little look at that, we can see we get a nice um, fine wood texture across there with some nice detail on it. And even though it's just projected as a plane, um, you can't really tell, it's got maybe a tiny little bit of stretching at the side, but nothing that will really show up for this type of asset. Okay, so now we have one set that has the uh, albedo on it, and then our set, second UV set, still like this, so I just want to, so these aren't brilliantly unwrapped, but they should do for the um, for the light map. I'm just going to chop some of these in half so that they'll fit on a little bit better. So of course you could unwrap these by hand, but it will take a little bit of time, and I'm trying to do this pretty fast. So as long as they don't cause any problems, I'm happy with them like this. So now we just want to lay this out for the UV, for the light map. Uh, so we can select them all and go to arrange and layout and lay them out. Okay, so now we have our light map channel. 
and we have our texture channel and that's all good so we can freeze transformations and that and delete the history and then we want to make sure that the pivot is in the correct place so these are going to be lying against the wall so I just want to move this pivot back a little bit and being in the center is just fine so I'm going to go around the other ones and just do the exact same and then bring this into UE4 all right then so let's set these up in UE4 so first of all I want to import my FBXs so I can just grab them and drag them into UE4 and then in the settings here I want to make sure that generate light map UVs is off I also do not want to create material and don't want to import textures because I want to put them where I want to put them. So I can also turn off auto generate collision because I don't really want collision on these. And then I can import all. Okay, so I'm going to right click all them and click edit just so I have them all up. I'm just going to double check that my UV sets are right. So I've got my texture and I've got my light maps. Okay, so that's fine. So the next thing we want to do is import our textures. So we go to our materials folder and textures I've got a foliage folder here with vines so I'm going to import my new vine materials into that and drop them in there and then I want to go to materials and I want to create a new material I'll call that vine set B and I want to open that as well so then I can grab our textures And I can drag them into this new material and I can start plugging these in so it's pretty simple I want to put my base color into base color and my roughness into roughness so at the moment the roughness is too dark so I'm just gonna lighten that up save that back over the old roughness map so we right click that map and go re-import that'll update so now we can see we've got a bit of mottled roughness on these leaves and now the next thing we want to do is to select our shader and then go down to shading model and change this to two-sided foliage and we also want to change the blend mode to masked and we can tick on two-sided also so now we want to take our alpha our mask and we want to put that into opacity mask now we can see our leaves have been cut out and the last texture we want to hook up is our SSS so we can just grab that and drop it straight into subsurface color and then we might just want a little bit more control over this so what we can do is right click and insert a multiply node and then we can also in Insert a so if you hold one on the keyboard and then uh, left click you'll get a constant and we can plug that into the multiply and that allows us to multiply that texture by constant and increase or decrease the power of it like so okay so the last thing we want to do just to add a little bit more interest to this is we can put in some wind so if we right click and type in simple you can find here simple grass wind and with this we just want three constants so one two three and we can just plug these straight into the nodes here and we want to set these really low and then we can plug that into world position offset now we see we've got some slight movements in them leaves and then we can tweak these to get the effect the right effect so we can save this and then we need to make the wood texture now I've already made the wood texture so I'll just show you that it's pretty much the same except we don't make it two-sided so here I've got wood bark a and all I've done is plug that texture that we made in there and I've put a zero in metallic and I've set just a roughness value because we don't really need much it's only small and it can't be seen very well and then we want to take both of these and we want to start plugging them into the uh, the model material slots ok 
Okay, so now it's time to drop these in and see what they look like. So when I drop them into this scene, they look very bright, and that's because they've not had the light baked on them yet. Um, so they will be extra bright until we build the lighting on this scene. We can see that looks really nice. The movement is a little bit too much. So I just go here, open that up and just reduce these a little bit. To wind speed as well. And that seems a good setting for me, so that's 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 0.3. So, just to show you guys what this finally looks like once it's all rendered and the light maps have been baked, we can see I've placed this about this scene here. So, placing these little bits together kind of blend really nicely, and you can't really see where they start and stop, and they just become this one organic mass. And uh, these techniques can be used for any other kind of foliage really. If you even wanted potted plants, palm leaves, stuff like that, it would be pretty much the exact same technique. So once you can do this, you can, you can pretty much do any kind of uh, plant. And a simple way of making this realistic would be to, instead of using the painted leaves that we made, uh, you could use a image, a good quality image of a leaf that you wanna use, of a real leaf, and create some roughness maps for that and even maybe create some um, normal maps for it as well but yeah pretty straightforward uh, the process doesn't change much for any other kind of foliage so like i always say i'm open to suggestions for future tutorials is there anything that you really want to learn how to make then uh, if i can do it then i will try to make a tutorial on it for you so uh, thank you very much and see you soon